Hi guys, thanks for joining us and welcome to Monday Thursday. It's the first day in the Triduum, the period of time in the church's year when we reflect on Jesus' suffering, his death, and ultimately his glorious resurrection. It's the most important time in the church's year and our entire faith is summed up in these few short days. What we're gonna hear is a few reflections and some scripture on each of the days of the Triduum to help you enter into the Easter period. So I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. So today on Monday, Thursday, we remember the Lord's Last Supper um, and the great act of service that he did by washing his disciples' feet. So we're going to hear a bit of scripture, um, a reflection, and then a prayer to do with Monday, Thursday. He got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin, and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so. For, this, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash another feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. In the scripture that we just heard, Jesus washes the feet of his followers and he humbles himself. And it's a powerful gesture full of symbolic meaning. The Son of God kneeling before people is a clear example of how absolutely no one is too important or too proud not to do the most simple and humble of tasks. And it reminds me of an incident from many years ago, long before I became a teacher. I was at a reception where myself and some colleagues, including my boss, were holding a press briefing, basically telling a group of journalists news about our company. And the meeting was being held in a London hotel and we'd laid on an impressive array of food for the journalists. There were plates and plates of sandwiches, sausage rolls, volovons, canapes, basically fancy little pies and snacks, salads and cooked meats, rice and chicken. This food could have fed an army of people. And unsurprisingly, even after the journalists had eaten what they wanted, we were left with an absolute mountain of food. After everyone had gone, my boss disappeared into the hotel kitchen. When he came back, he had some aluminium trays and began piling all the food onto them. When he'd loaded about four of these platters, he covered them with cling film. And I assumed he was taking all this stuff home with him and thought better than that than just simply throwing it into a bin. And we'd shared a car to drive to the hotel. My boss was driving, but when we left, he took a different route out of the city and went down to uh, the river. And he didn't say a word about what he intended to do, but simply stopped next to a very rough looking building that looked out over the river. He got the trays out of the boot and carried them to the front door, rang a bell. And a man came out and my boss showed him the food. And the man said, thank you for your kindness. This will be really appreciated and enjoyed. We got back in the car, we drove away, and I asked him what the building was, and he told me that it was a shelter for homeless people, and that they often welcomed donations from the public. And I've never forgotten this gesture. It was a simple act of kindness, made by a highly influential and important person, who was very high up in a company, and was something that he didn't have to do. He didn't do it for show, and it was only witnessed by one other person, being myself. All of us can be of service to other people. Even if it's one small gesture, it can make a difference to people's daily lives. And there's another piece of scripture that says something very similar. The greatest among you will be your servant. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Dear Lord, join the Last Supper and wash your disciples' feet. Help us, Lord, to use this example of service to fuel our hearts to love one another as you love us. Give us strength to not only to serve you, but to serve those who are surrounding us. Amen. So the next day is Good Friday, the day when Jesus 
dies on the cross. There's nothing really nice to say about today. Jesus suffers and dies, but he does all of that for you. Today is the only day in the church's calendar when there is no mass. The services that happen at churches are just that, they're services, because there is no celebration, because today is the day that Jesus dies. So we're gonna hear a little bit of scripture and then a reflection and then a prayer on that. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed, handed him over to, to be crucified. So they took Jesus carrying the cross. They crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right and one on, on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. When it was the evening, there came a rich man from Arizona named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered him to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he Good Friday is a day in which we remember the crucifixion of the Lord. A day of sorrow, a day of mourning, a day where all seems lost. The world is currently witnessing a global pandemic, a time of isolation and uncertainty, a time of worry. It is essential to remember that everything we are doing will result in good. In times like this, it's very easy to focus on the negatives. It's important that we search for the positives and the joy that God has graced us with. The great philosopher Plato believed in the cycle of opposites, where in order for something to exist, it must have an opposite. Therefore, out of this time of worry and uncertainty, there will come a time of joy and happiness. Jesus died on the cross to forgive our sins. His suffering allows us to spend eternal life with God in heaven. It is a reminder that out of our suffering can come can lead to positive outcomes, as only good can come from times of hardship. Saint Augustine said, evil only exists in the absence of good. Though the apostles were scared after the, je after the death of Jesus, fleeing away and hiding, they kept their faith in Christ, that he would rise from the dead. Our faith is something that we can be certain and rely on throughout this difficult time. Dear God, you sent your only son to die for us on the cross. Help us to be the best version of ourselves as you created us to be, using all of our gifts and talents to allow Christ's light to shine through us all. Amen. So Holy Saturday is a day of mourning, where we reflect on the fact that Jesus died to save all of us. We're about to hear an ancient sermon by a priest, um, and then a reflection Something strange is happening. There is a great silence on earth today. A great silence and stillness. The whole earth keeps silence because the king is asleep. The earth trembled and is still because God has fallen asleep in the flesh. And he has raised up all who have slept ever since the world began. God has died in the flesh and hell trembles with fear. He has gone to search for our first parent. As for a lost sheep, greatly desiring to visit those who live in darkness and in the shadow of death. He has gone to free the sorrow and the captives at the evil. He who is both God and the Son of Eve, the Lord approached them bearing the cross, the weapon that had won him the victory. As a sight of him, Adam, the first man he created, struck his breast in terror and cried out to Eddie, My Lord be with you, Christ answered. And with your spirit, he took him by the hand and raised him up, saying, Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will give you life. Holy Saturday is a really unusual day because nothing really happens. On Monday, Thursday, we hear about Jesus' Last Supper and he gives us that great example of washing his disciples' feet. On Good Friday, we hear of his suffering and his death. And tomorrow, on Easter Sunday, we'll celebrate his glorious resurrection. But today, nothing really happens. It's a day of silence, a day of calm and stillness. 
No one really knows what's going on. The disciples would have been terrified. You know, the person they had given their entire lives to, they had abandoned everything to follow him, was now dead. Their cause was at an end. And yet we know that something more was happening. We know that Jesus, as we used to pray, descended into hell. And there he retrieved all of the souls so that they could journey to heaven. So that's what Jesus is doing today. He's actively saving your soul and allowing you to go to heaven. It's a really phenomenal thing. But as we said, today is a day of silence. So this Saturday, try and find some time for that. Try and find some time to be still and to be silent and to enjoy those moments because they are powerful moments. And in that silence and reflection, I pray that you can encounter God. Lord, help us to find time out of our busy lives to be still and acknowledge your presence. May you bless us with peace and journey with us on this holy day. So, so far we have looked at Jesus' uh, death and his suffering, um, but there will be another video on Sunday which talks about his resurrection and the joy that he brings to all of us. So make sure you check that video out on Sunday, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up uh, and press the notifications bell. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful Easter, thank you for watching um, and we'll see you soon, bye bye.